Welcome to the fourth and final episode in a Legendarium series about Dante's Inferno. In part four, A Lake of Ice, we will talk about Dante's journey through the very depths of hell, the eighth and ninth circles. Virgil guides Dante through the forest of tree souls to the edge of the third ring of the seventh circle of hell. There they find a desert of red-hot sand, upon which fire flakes drift down slowly and ceaselessly. Blasphemers, those who deny the grace of God with their words, lie prone on a bank of sand. Their bodies are forever burning. Among them Dante sees King Caponaeus, who besieged Thebes during the Classical Age. King Caponaeus rages that the torments of hell will never break his defiance, and he has presumably done so for more than a thousand years. Next, Dante finds usurers, or corrupt moneylenders, who sit beneath a rain of fire with their heavy purses around their necks. The gold they so coveted in life now becomes a painful burden. One supposes that Ebenezer Scrooge, if he remained unredeemed, would have gone to this circle of hell. Having completed their journey through the seventh circle, the poets reach a cliff at the bottom of which they see a blood-red river. During this break, Virgil explains to Dante that beneath a mountain in Crete, a broken statue of an old man weeps, forming the rivers of hell including Acheron, Styx, Phlegathon, and finally Cocytus, a pool of ice at the bottom of hell itself. This statue is made from gold, silver, brass, and iron, progressively less precious metals that reflect the decline of humankind from the Garden of Eden. Having finished, Virgil asks for Dante's belt, which he throws into the river. A creature emerges with the face of a man, the body of a serpent, and two hairy paws. While it horrifies Dante, the monster offers to take them to the eighth circle of hell, known as Malabolg or Evil Pouches. Dante places fraudsters into this circle, because he believes fraud represents a corruption of the godly idea of love, making it worse than barefaced sin. The eighth circle has a wall running along the outside and a circular pit at its center. Ten evenly spaced ridges run between the wall and the pit, with each of these so-called pouches punishing fraudsters. The first pouch has seducers being chased around and whipped by demons as punishment for treating women as property. Jason, of Argonauts fame, is kept here because he seduced two women on his journey to find the Golden Fleece. In the second pouch, flatterers are plunged headfirst into ditches filled with human excrement. Dante indulges in a bit of body humor, writing, Searching it with my eyes, I saw one there whose head was so befouled with feces you couldn't tell which one he was. Within the third pouch, Dante sees those who bought and sold church offices. Such men stand head first in stone bowls and have their feet engulfed in flames. There, Dante finds a pope named Nicholas III, who mournfully confesses that he used his sacred office for personal gain, yet names two other popes who will suffer more than he, Boniface VIII and Clement V. Here, Dante strongly condemns the corruption of the church, something which did much to fuel the Protestant Reformation some two centuries later. Within the fourth pouch, Dante places astrologers, diviners, and magicians who sought the power to see the future. Now they have their heads twisted on backwards so they can never see forwards again. Their tears of grief fall upon their buttocks. Dante also places a Greek prophet named Tiresias here for his being blessed by Apollo with the gift of prophecy. 
In the fifth pouch, corrupt politicians are immersed in boiling tar and watched over by a group of demons called the Mala Branch. Virgil asks the Mala Branch to fly them across the Tar Lake, which of course they do, being surprisingly cooperative. Yet during the trip, another of the Mala Branch lift a Florentine politician that Dante didn't care for out of the Tar and begins tearing him to shreds with his claws. Unfortunately for the demon, the politician wiggles out of the demon's clutches, who plunges into the tar after the rent politician, only to get stuck himself. The Mala Branch blame Dante for their comrade's plight and pursue them. In one of the strangest chase scenes in literature, Dante uses Virgil as a sled to glide downhill into the sixth pouch. As the poets go deeper into hell, it has become more dangerous. In the sixth pouch, hypocrites must wear heavy lead cloaks painted gold on the outside to symbolize how they appeared good and just when they were anything but. They march in an endless procession over Caiaphas, a high priest whom Dante blamed for the crucifixion of Christ, who is crucified himself and laid upon the rocky earth to be stamped on for all eternity. After navigating a sheer cliff face of broken stone, the two climb into the seventh pouch, where teeming masses of serpents chase after condemned thieves. When the serpents bite them, they randomly transform into animals or even household objects. As they robbed others, they are robbed of their true form. Dante watches one serpent bite a man who stole from a church between the shoulders, and he instantly catches fire and burns up. Yet he rises from the ashes to resume his eternal torment. At this point, Dante sarcastically notes that many of the thieves are his fellow Florentines, and comments that they have become famous on both earth and in hell. The eighth pouch houses those who give false counsel, where they are immersed in flames. Of course, Dante, like other Italian intellectuals, believed himself descended from Trojans who fled the conquest of Troy by the Greeks. Being on the Trojan side, Dante sticks the Greek heroes Odysseus and Diomedes in the circle of hell because they deceived King Priam of Troy with their legendary wooden horse. Next, the ninth pouch houses schismatics, or religious splitters, who march in a procession past a massive sword-wielding demon which chops them in half again and again for all eternity. One knight who sowed discord between King Henry II of England and his son Henry the Young King must swing his head by the hair like a lantern for all eternity. Finally, in the tenth pouch, Dante consigns those who practiced alchemy, an art he considered unnatural. There they endure every disease known to man. Continuing his grudge over the Trojan War, Dante also sticks the man who let the Trojan horse into his city's walls. Having passed through the eighth circle, Dante and Virgil finally plunge into the very depths, the ninth and final circle of hell, a lake of ice called Cocytus. This circle of hell is reserved for betrayers, which Dante considered to be the very worst sin. Lesser betrayers at least have their heads above the ice so that they can speak to Dante. However, the very worst betrayers are kept far below the surface of the ice, where they are twisted and contorted into painful positions for the rest of eternity. And in the very center of Cocytus, Dante finds Lucifer himself, a giant with bat-like wings. He is frozen into the ice up to his chest. Despite being the king of hell, he too is ultimately powerless and trapped because of his sins. Yet Satan has three heads in which he chews the three souls Dante judged to be the very worst. 
First, of course, is Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Christ. And in the other two mouths, Dante places the two ringleaders of the assassination of Julius Caesar, Brutus, and Cassius. Dante blamed these men not only for the death of Julius Caesar, but the collapse of the Roman Empire and the disunity which plagued Italy ever since the reign of the last Roman Emperor. With that, Dante and Virgil are able to climb the stone wall alongside Satan, and they break through the surface of the earth. No doubt pleased to finally have fresh air to breathe again, Dante and Virgil find themselves at the foot of a mountain called Purgatorio, which represents a halfway state between heaven and hell, where sinners have the chance to cleanse themselves of sin by enduring a series of ordeals before they reach heaven. And so so Dante's journey continues. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.